want to.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Is this on? Jazakallahu khairan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Clearly looks can be deceiving. I'm not as strong as what you think. But uh, I would like to thank you all for coming. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. I would like to thank the masjid, the organizations, the committees, all those that were involved in bringing me here, making this possible. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and bless your children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our efforts. Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the King, the Master, the Sustainer, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, and we send peace and blessings upon His beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers, it is very important that whenever we come to a talk, we come to a lecture, we come to a bayan, we come seeking. You have to. Deen, my brothers, is not the entertainment industry. You don't come to the house of Allah to be seen. We don't come because there's a speaker or there's an event or there happens to be something and you don't want to be the one that misses out. So therefore you go there only to be seen by certain individuals in the masjid. That's not how deen works. We don't come to the khutbah, my brothers, Please, if I can kindly ask for no movement, Wallahi, when, when, when someone moves, it distracts me dearly. So please, if I can kindly ask, whoever needs to move, move now. Whatever you need to do, do it now, please. We come, Wallahi, we come to the Friday khutbah simply to tick the box. I'm a local in the masjid. Everyone knows my chair, everyone knows my position, everyone knows my spot. You come in, I do my two rak'at, you sit down, wake me up when the time is finished, I'll pray my two rak'at and thanks for coming, I did my Jum'ah. And then we wonder why is there no change in my life? The Qur'an, the Qur'an would be read and then people would tell me, brother, can you give a talk after? Allah speaks! No change. Habibi, every alim in the world can come together collectively, collaborate together. To, if the words of Allah have no impact on you, what words of any human being can possibly move your heart? But again, we, we, we don't, we come here to be seen. We came, we were there. Did you hear someone came? And this, wallahi, my brothers, we come to the talk. I've seen it many times. Even as we're listening, you're not thinking about yourself. You're thinking about someone else in your life who's not here, who you believe with yaqeen that that person needed to... Subhanallah, man, the whole bayan, it was exactly about that person, man. I wish he was here. Not, not me, Habibi. Brother, I fell from the heavens. I'm God's gift to humanity. But your bayan, I wish my mother was here to hear it, you know. I wish my father, my mother-in-law, my... Always, if Habibi, the, 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 what adab is this with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Wallahi, my brothers, if we came with open hearts, genuine open hearts, if you came genuinely seeking change, genuinely seeking, Wallahi, you will learn things from a bayan, you will learn things that even the bayan, even the khatib did not intend on teaching you. Allah will teach you. But we come here, my heart, my mind is already made up, my heart is already sealed, my opinion about the matter is already solved. So please, my brothers, Wallahi, just as your guest, I beg you, open up your heart. For the love of Allah, open up your heart and sit here tonight. Don't look to the left and don't look to the right. Don't even uh, je say between you and Allah, that, Ya Allah, I really want change. I really want change. Guide me, Allah. Guide me, guide me. My brothers, this dream that you and I follow is based on the truth. Allah is the truth. The prophet is the truth. The angels are the truth. All the prophets before him are the 
of judgment is haq, jannah is haq, jahannam is haq. And if you believe anything else, then for this person is nothing but jahannam. The core of Islam, the very fundamentals of Islam is based on truth. Allah never, hasha lillah, anything that Allah says is nothing other than the pure truth. Anything other, look, the Quran is pure, pure, undiluted knowledge. Straight from Ar Rahman, pure knowledge. People now, especially now, we live in a world where knowledge is praised. So people are in search and running and trying this and trying that. All along, while the most pure knowledge sits there on the shelf. This deen was based on truth. And Allah is truth. And everything that He says is truth. And His Prophet is truth. And everything He says is truth. And Allah says that everything He says is truth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers, has ordered us in the Qur'an. You know, in the Harvard University in America, I think it's number one university in the world, I think num number one or number two, but definitely up there. The Harvard University, in the law faculty, they have a wall where they have very famous quotes. Right? Imagine, even the Harvard University, they chose, after years and years of research, they chose what they deemed to be the greatest expression of justice. Guess what it was? A verse in the Quran in Surah An-Nisa. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, O oh, you who believe, be bearers of the truth. Stand for the truth. Be bearers of the truth. Allah says, even if it be against yourselves, even if it be against your parents, even if it be against the Muslims, be speak the truth. Stand by the truth. Stand by justice. Allah says, whether it, whether it be fear of rich or poor, Allah says, He is the protector of all things. And don't let your nafs, and don't let your hour, and don't let your wings and your desires get the better of you. Be bearers of the truth. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, again and again, he says to speak the truth, be people of the truth, stand for the haq. A quality that is now, my brothers, forgive me. And your allegiance is to Allah before anyone and anything. It's to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then to the deen of Allah Islam. Your allegiance, your life, your money, your fitr, every single aspect about you and your life belongs to Allah and His Prophet and His Deen and nothing and no one else after Him. My allegiance is to Allah and His Prophet. And the truth, I know that with all my respect, 
To my mother with all my love for it. My allegiance and your allegiance is to Allah and His Prophet and His King. But when push comes to shove, the real true colors that are buried deep down, they come out. When push comes to shove, we don't stand for the truth. We stand for other than the truth. When I was in high school, this incident has scarred me for life. And you know what the problem is, my brother? Until you and I are prepared to reflect upon our own mistakes and our own lives, we will never be born. We love to see our own things. We love to. Never all of them stuck to the love of me. No, 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 you know, I'm just a humble man. But deep down, they take you to places all over the world. They take you to places to meet people. Again, again, please, what way I beg you, don't misunderstand me, you know. But I, 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 I can't. It eats me up inside. Tell me his name. Astaghfirullah, <laughs> brother. You know, Allah, I'm not like that, you know. So until we're prepared to dissect ourselves and our own lives and see how we're going to be prepared. And my high school was dominated with Lebanese people. So I'm Lebanese. We had a boy that came to school, he was new. No one knew, so there was no fact, no dalil, nothing factual. But the rumor was he was half Jew. In a school that's dominated by Muslims, not just Muslims, Lebanese Muslims. Ya Habibi. The guy didn't stand a chance from day one. He became the laughing stock of the school. You know, there's all the every job, you know. Wallahi, he, he, he never committed a crime. He never hurt anyone. He never did anything. Look, look, look at the injustices. Allah hates oppression, my brothers. Allah hates zulm. He... Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyway, so this boy, he came to school and he, khalas, he became the mockery of the school. Whenever he would walk past, he'd slap him across the back of the head and making fun. Anyway, at the time, for those of you that remember, Nokia, you know the phone Nokia, it introduced back then what was the 8810. It was a chrome slide phone. Habibi, no one in school even had a phone, let alone a phone like that. At the time, it was $1,000. At the time, it was a $1,000 phone. So this young boy, I don't know how, he somehow he got his hands on this phone. So he comes to school that day and he was, he was, he was ecstatic. He's thinking, you know, now finally this is going to be my chance to get in with the crowd, you know. 
Subhanallah, like when someone who's not from our skin color comes to our masjid. You know, we all love to act, no, 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 brother, there's no racism in our communities. <laughs> no, no, no. Habibi, that's because you look and you look and talk and smell and eat exactly like everyone else in your masjid, except for the exceptional maybe three, four. But go speak to them, see how comfortable they are. No, 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 Sheikh, our masjid is open for. We love Islam, we need to give da'wah, we want people to accept Islam. Have you seen when someone makes shahada? Huh? The whole masjid gets excited and everyone takes out their phone and we get there, you know, and the shaykh or the imam and repeat after me, say, Ashadu an la il an takbir and everyone gets excited and brothers, please give salam to your brother and ah, ah, ah. But he wants to get married, who's going to give him their daughter? Who? Come on, come on, Dean, Dean, come on. He wants to get married. Give him your daughter. But because he's not your skin color, because he doesn't speak your language, because he's, his mother doesn't cook the food that you... Look, ah, Allahi, please, my heart is boiling. So the boy comes to school, he has the phone, he's excited. And that day, subhanAllah, that day we were... You know, young boys, we were all hanging out. And all my friends, they were sitting on the set of stairs. And I don't know why, well, of course it's all from Allah. That day, I happened to be the only one that's not sitting on the stairs. So I was standing, and all the boys were sitting, and we're joking and laughing. And, we're... and so this brother, he came from my left, wallahi, I remember. He came from my left, and he had the phone, and he was so excited. And of course, you know, he's thinking, finally, you know, the, the, the boys are going to accept me. So all the boys jumped up, that's the latest phone bro, this is stuff you look at in posters. So all the boys got up and uh, show me the phone and show me the phone and anyway, so the phone, I'm watching this, the phone went from hand to hand, from hand to hand, until one brother, Muslim, who I swear by Allah, I actually didn't even like him at the time. He grabbed the phone and put it in his pocket. Now I've seen it. He put the phone in his pocket. Now the boy's looking for his phone. Where's my phone? Where's my phone? But I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're... And slowly it started to settle in his heart that, he, that what just happened to him. He just got lost. The Prophet of Allah says, be truthful people and that's it. Do you think being an honest person is, well, I came to the masjid, I heard a bayan, and now I walked outside, and now all of a sudden I'm God's gift? Deen is hard work, my brothers. Deen is hard work. Why do you think Allah gave us 60, 70 years? Why? Why? Do you think Allah gave us 60, 70 years so we can buy our houses and build them and watch our kids grow? Allah gave us this time because our hearts are so sick. That it takes time and effort, time and effort to purify these sick hearts. So the boys, where's my phone? Where's my phone? Who's seen my phone? Anyway, it's going from Khalas. He started to realize that I just got ripped off. And then he turned to me. Subhanallah, he just. It just happened so. He turned to me and he said to me, Hublus, did you see who took my phone? Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Allegiance, allegiance. Is my allegiance really to Allah and His Prophet? Or is it to the people that I hang out with? Now there's a dilemma. <laughs> If you're one of the boys and you snitch, what happens? Am I an alien here or what? Allah puts you in corners. Allah wants to see where and who is your allegiance to. What a dilemma, man. 
يا الله is he one of the boys is he with us no matter what was he going to be a coward and snitch who took my phone did you see who took my phone how many times my brothers how many times look we all get married and many of us get divorced we get divorced Habibi the Sahaba get divorced. So trust me, you and I, we're not any better. Divorce, unfortunately, it's a part of life. It's there in our deen, it's there in the fuck. We understand, it happens. But how many times we try to reconciliate? You know, we try to reconciliate. The sister comes in, the brother comes in, her father and her mom and his father and his mom, and they sit down. So the brother or the sister says their side of the story. And sometimes it's so black and white, it's so in your face that he is in the wrong and she is in... Yani, click, a blind man can see. Clearly. So he turned to the young man's dad and he said, Sheikh, Hajj, Habibi, Albi, you heard the girl. Yes, I heard the girl. Clearly your, your son is oppressing her. Yes, my son is oppressing her. So Alhamdulillah, inshallah, we can move forward, inshallah. Yeah, but that's my son. What do you want me to do? I will stand with my son. That's the truth. Please, 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 my brothers. Until we're prepared to dissect and stop being honest with ourselves. Habibi, look, look, look. your son is oppressing the woman. No, 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 no. And any excuse to get out of the situation. My son can never make a mistake. It's always the other kids that are interfering. It's always the other kids that are causing the... Never my child, ever! Speak the truth. Stand by the truth, even if it's against yourself. But not us, my brothers. No, 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 no. We speak the truth to sound impressive. But when push comes to shove, our allegiance shows. If you push me enough, you will find that my allegiance is not to the truth. It's to the color of my skin and my people. When you really push my buttons, you will find my allegiance is not to the ummah, but my sheikh and my masjid. How many times, wallahi, how many times there'll be a brother in the community who's causing havoc, causing havoc. So then, you know, he comes from a big family. <laughs> e, wallahi. You know, people talk, brother, people, you know, times have changed. Wallahi, we haven't moved an inch from the jahl that was 1400 years ago in Mecca. Not an inch. If anything, we've gone backwards. Brother, he's from a particular family. <laughs> Who's going to talk to him? Anyway, by the time you get there, you know, for me, this happens in Sydney all the time. You, you know, alhamdulillah, whatever. So I'm in a good position where I can talk to certain people. Brother, your brother, he's ripping off people. He's harming people, man. Yeah, 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 I know. I know. But wallahi, if anyone touches my brother, there's going to be war. You and I, we think, we think this is deen. But by Allah, it's nothing other than jahiliyyah. Because my allegiance and your allegiance is not to my brother. It's to Allah and his prophet. It's to Allah and his prophet. When Musa bin Umayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, in the battle of Badr, his brother was on the opposite side. And his brother was one of the captives of war. So when he, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, after the battle took place, and those that caught their captives, Musa walks past and he sees his brother. So his brother gets excited that, look, my brother is here now, he will say a few words for me. So Musa, when he sees his brother, he says to the Muslim that kept, he says to the Muslim that's caught his brother, he says to him, hang on to this man. His mother will pay a lot of money for him. 
So his brother says, against me, I'm your brother, I'm your flesh and blood. He says, by Allah, you are not my brother. He is my brother because it's la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. So the brother looks at me and says, Muhammad, did you see who took my phone? And that day Allah showed and proved to me what a coward I am. Because I looked him dead in the eyes and I said to him, brother, I don't know what you're talking about. Oppression! We see injustice, yet we say nothing about it. Because it may, it just may shake my cage. We see injustice. We know it's wrong. But who speaks about it? Where and who is your allegiance to, my brother? To whom is your allegiance? Ask yourself something, please. Who put me in that position? Who? See, we say Allah because we're programmed to say Allah. But do you really believe in your heart it was Allah? Because if I really believed it was Allah, I would have clearly said, yes, brother, I see you took your phone, it was that coward there. To stand by the truth, even if he was a Jew. My job and your job is to stand by the haq. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. Why is the condition of the ummah the way it is? Because we see injustice, yet we do nothing about it, we say nothing about it, we turn the other eye. We turn, why? Because it's just easier. Injustice, oppression, to speak the haq Allah says, even if it's against yourself, even if it's against your family, that's your job. You want for those al-Allah, how do you think it's going to come out? Allah pushes. لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ وَعَمَلًا Allah wants the truth in your life, in your daily affairs, in everything that you do, you stand by the haq. But we don't do we, my brothers. Do we? Where are those that stand by the truth? Where? Where is your allegiance? Every single day Allah tests us, my brothers. The Prophet of Allah, he says an amazing hadith, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the Sahih hadith, the Prophet of Allah, he says, one of you will speak a lie. One of you will speak a lie. And he will continue to speak that lie until he is written in the heavens as a lie.
one of the women from a prominent tribe had committed a crime that is in need of a capital punishment. Not death, but she had to be punished somehow, one way or another. So her tribe got together. Very similar to how we do now. <laughs> I'm telling you, Allahi, we haven't moved an inch. So they sat down and they said, what are we going to do? She's the daughter of Fulan and she's the daughter of so-and-so and this tribe is new to Islam and they have money and they have wealth and they have this. What are we going to do? How are we going to? But there's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know. So they came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they threw every excuse at him. My brothers, let me tell you something. Call a spade a spade. And don't call it a big spoon. Khalas, just top it on the chin. Wallahi, it doesn't make you any less of a man. You're wrong, I'm wrong. That's, wallahi, just accept it. I'm wrong. I did wrong. Move on. You know, when my brother does something wrong, no one is telling you to abandon your brother. He's your flesh and blood, we understand. Stand by your brother, but show your brother that we don't eat people's haq. Listen, my brother, I know my brother harmed you. He's my brother, he's my flesh. He harmed you. How much does he owe you? Look, we can't afford it now, but I, I give you my word that by this time, by this date, please work with me. Your haq will be restored. Show your brother. No. No, 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 no. Not me. When I came to South Africa now, we had an issue at the airport. I didn't know. I came with my two kids, and apparently in this country you need birth certificates and letters of consent. And so I got to the airport, and the, and the lady at the, cost, you know, at the customs, she said to me, sir, do you have the birth certificates and letter of consent? I said, what birth certificates, what letter of consent? And then instantly she said, sir, when you come to South Africa with children... You need birth certificates and a letter of consent. I said, oh, well, I don't have it. She said, well, you can't come in. Look, 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 look how we hate the truth. I said, yeah, but I didn't know. She said, yeah, well, that's not my problem. So I said, well, you're rude. Well, the truth is, really, she's not rude. She's doing her job. But you cannot accept she said, sir, if you come to a country, it's your responsibility to check what the, what the rules and the regulations of this country are. Is she wrong? But every ounce of me was. Yeah, but the way she spoke. Habibi, what? Who, who cares how she spoke? <laughs> ah, we hate the truth. We say we love the truth, but when we hear it, when we hear it, it burns. So they came to Rasulullah and they threw everything at him. Ya Rasulullah, this tribe, they're new to Islam and we're trying to win them over. And, 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 and. So what did he return and say to them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He says to them, by Allah, by Allah, if the daughter of Muhammad, Fatima, was to steal... I will chop off her hand with my own sword. Deen. No one and nothing is above the law. But not us. Not us. Come on, Sheikh. Let it go, man. For me, Sheikh. If the daughter of Muhammad, not my words, so don't get offended. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, My daughter, and not just any daughter, he said, Fatima, the queen of the women of paradise. He says, If my daughter Fatima was to steal, I will chop off her hand, not with my own sword. Show me this Islam anyway. Show me it. Deen. 
to be with the honest, to be with the upright, to speak the haq, even if it's against myself. Wallahi, even if it's against my people. We stand by the truth because that's what Allah wants. My allegiance is to Allah and His Prophet, not my father. Yes, with all adab and respect to my dad. But when push comes to shove, I'm sorry, my dad, I stand for the haq, whether you like it or not. Allah didn't create me to please you. My job is to please him. But even if it's, a, yes, even, wallahi, even if the haq is against the Muslims, ajib, remember, wallahi, I'm out of time. There's so much I want to share, man. When Ali bin Abi Talib was the Amir, amazing, amazing story. Sahih, so amazing story. When Ali bin Abi Talib was the Amir, he had a shield that was stolen from him. So one day while he was Amir al Mu'minin, he's walking in the marketplace. And he sees a Jew, look, subhan, a Jew. He sees a Jew selling a shield. So he comes to the shield and he looks at it. You know, sometimes you've lost your phone and there's two iPhones next to each other. So you pick up your, and you start looking for distinctive marks that you know on your phone. Do you know what I mean? Lost, you know, certain signs. So Ali bin Abi Talib, he picks up the shield and then he's looking for certain signs. <laughs> That's my shield. So he says to the man, he says to him, man, this is my shield. So the Jew naturally, of course, he says, brother, I don't know what you're talking about, man. It's mine, it's not, it's mine, it's not. Now there's a dilemma. What to do? So Ali bin Abi Talib, he says to him, look, let's go to the court and put the matter in front of the judge. Please, please, wallahi, I beg you. I know the story is entertaining, but don't listen to it for the entertainment. Really apply it in your life. Apply it. So the Jew... For a moment, let's think like a Jew. He's thinking, bro, I'm a Jew. And you want me to go with Amir al-Mu'mineen into a Muslim court in front of a Muslim judge that the Amir himself appointed. <laughs> but what's he going to do? But come to a dead end. Something needs to happen. So he says, fine, let's go to the court. I want you to imagine, my brothers, Malish, let me dissect this story just a little bit. Sometimes brothers tell me, said, brother, wallahi, you know, I was in a hard spot, brother, you know, what do you want me to do? Look how weak we've become, wallahi, look how weak we've become. You know, do you guys, inshallah, I'm sure you guys don't have this problem, but in South Africa, do you have the problem of moon size inverse calculation? Do you guys have this issue? You do, even here. Ajib. Back home in Australia, it's every Ramadan and every Eid. We start Ramadan with a war, huh? and we finish Ramadan and embrace Eid with another war. Moon sighting, my moon sighting, do we do calculation, no calculation, it has to be moon sighted, but is it local, global, we are Allah, back and forth, back and forth. To prove to you, my brothers, you know what, you and I, when we think about being honest people, we think about an honorable, wow, to be an upright person, but the truth is, anyone that is truthful, anyone that is just, Anyone that stands for the haq, wallahi, you will be hated by your own people more than anyone. When is someone that is just, when is he praised? Guess when? Guess when you're loved and they start singing your songs? When? Ya Habibi, when you die. 
so long as you're alive, you get under everyone's skin. Not personally, but because everything you stand for is against everything that they do. On a side note, I grew up to Sheikh Ahmed be that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him. And you know, growing up in Australia, I thought the man must be like a king in South Africa. <laughs> I thought the man must be like what? Like a king in this country. We used to watch his videos and we were amazed. And to my shock, Actually, really not shocked, but to my disappointment, I heard the man had so much resistance when he was alive. When did they praise him? After his death. <laughs> Welcome to the life of any man who really wants Allah and is not saved by the people, man. So, what was I speaking about before? But about Ali bin Abi Talib, I was saying something else. The court, yes, yes. So he goes to the court. Now I was saying something else, I know I was. Anyway. So they go to the court, and now the Jews thinking, Habibi, what chance do I possibly have? They walk in, and now imagine the judge. Imagine the judge. He's thinking, you know what? <laughs> Not only is the opponent a Jew, you know, sometimes you hear a story that your father tells you. <laughs> Must be haq, bro. Habibi, when, when my dad speaks, it's as good as Bukhari. Tab Sheikh, tab, at least just go check the other person, you know. I mean, there's always two sides of this. No, 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 Habibi, I got it from a reliable source. Yani, what source did you get it from, Habibi? Wait, 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 yani. Did Allah give you wahi, yani, what? There's a dispute. There's two sides to every story. No, 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 Sheikh, I heard it from a reliable source. Wallahi, most of the hate that we carry in our hearts, most of the hate that we carry in our hearts is actually not based on fact. It's just based on what the people around us say. That's the truth. <laughs> I know people that hate certain sects. They hate them with such a passion. Saying, brother, have you ever met someone from that group? No, I haven't, but. Habibi, but what? You know what but does? You know, someone comes to you, Sheikh, Wallahi, I love you, you're such a nice man, you know, you're so handsome, you're so beautiful, you have such great akhlaq, and you have, and you have, and you have. But, you know what but does? But really negates everything I just said before that. No, 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 look, I've never met someone, but my Sheikh told me, bro. Most of the hate that we carry now, wallahi, it's just, it is, hey. So they walk in, the judge looks, not only is it a Jew, but Amir al muminin <laughs> the man that appointed me in this position, not, you know what, forget that. The man is Ali bin Abi Talib. The son-in-law of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The man is the husband of Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. The man is the father of Al-Hassan wal Hussein. The man is a man whom the Prophet of Allah testified, not once or twice, multiple times that this man is a man of Jannah. I ask you, do I even need to listen to his story? Your wife tells you a story about someone, uh, 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 you know, and she, and, and she cries a couple of tears, you crumble. Sheikh, what are you going to do, man? She started crying.
Rasulullah, you know, in the Battle of Khaybar, in the Battle of Khaybar, in the first day, the Prophet of Allah, he gave the flag to Abu Bakr, and they fought and fought, but they couldn't break the enemy line. Then the next day, he, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he gave the flag to Umar ibn al-Khattab. They fought and fought, but they couldn't break the enemy lines. So that night, that night when the Muslims came to camp, the Prophet of Allah, he came and he, he came to the army and he said to them, he said to them, tomorrow morning, I will give the flag to a man whom Allah and his Prophet love, and by Allah, he loves Allah and his Prophet. Umar ibn al-Khattab said, I never desired position more than I did on that day. That night, no one slept in the army. No one. People stayed up all night. Who do you think it is? The next morning, he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he called for Ali bin Abi Talib and he gave him the flag. But look at the justice of Islam. So they walk in. And the judge says to Ali bin Abi Talib, he says, look, since you're the one accusing the Jew, what's your story, man? So Ali bin Abi Talib, he says to him, he says, this is my shield, and it was stolen. So the judge says to him, Wallahi, what, what, what man? He says to him, Ya Amir al muminin do you have any evidence, do you have any proof that this shield is yours? Look at the justice of Islam. Not, whoa, brother, he's Muslim. Not, oh, brother, you know, he's my cousin. Not, he's my brother. Not, he's my relative. He's Amir al muminin And you're a judge and you're asking for proof? Yes, because that's the justice of Islam. So he says to me, Amir, do you have any proof? So he says to me, yes, I do. 